EVO review, take one. First slate for cam one. Second slate for cam two. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. Well, uh, I've had this unit in my possession for way too long now. Audience sent it to me. They've been very patient. Finally, my review of the Evo 4 from Audience. Let's take a look at this thing. This is the box it comes in. I love boxes that are so tightly tolerant that they have suction as you open them. And let's see, a little trim plate to keep everything protected. And here it is. Evo 4. It's a beauty. Really small. Not the smallest device I've seen of its type, but pretty darn compact. A simple single knob control, which a lot of products these days are going this way. And then a series of buttons that when pressed will control the way the knob operates. Then on the front or the side, we have our guitar input and our headphone monitor jack. Nothing on the either side here. And on the rear of the unit, there's the USB-C port. Yes, USB-C. Uh, we have our monitor outputs for connecting to speakers and our combo jacks with XLR and TRS, which uh, you can plug in microphones or instruments into those inputs. So that's what the unit looks like itself. What else is in the box? Let's see. A USB-C cable, that's to be expected. And, and I really actually love this, an extremely Spartan user manual. How many people read the actual, actually read the manuals? Really? You're lying. And just has the information they really need to operate the unit. That's what I love. I love products that think like the user that it was intended for. I'm going to connect it to my Mac Mini here for the very first time. This is literally its first actual test. This is the way I like to do my reviews. Real world, connect, plug it in, and see what happens. So here we go. So the unit seems to be alive. Let's see, what do we got here? We have a little uh, level indicator light that came up over here. And according to the manual, that is the output volume. So right now it is set to control output volume. Look at those, look at those beautiful bright white LEDs. They even kind of like fade up as you go past. So they, they don't just light up, they fade up as you turn the knob to the next LED. That's some really nice attention to detail in the design. And I also do like that this is not a clicky knob. The knob doesn't click when you press on, down on it. I think manufacturers have realized that that's bad design for human interfaces and have eliminated that as a feature. So it's not a clicky knob, doesn't have a button inside, it's just a knob. Question is, are there drivers? Do we need to install any drivers to use this thing? Um, from what I understand, reading the instructions, um, and I know this for a fact on Mac, you don't have to install any drivers. Um, the Mac is a plug and play system. It will just work. On, uh, they do actually do have drivers though at evo.audio and it has a firmware update available. So you know what? I probably should actually get the driver because if you don't install the driver, you can't actually install the firmware. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's go to software, maybe downloads. And there actually is a Mac driver, even though this unit does show up right away when you plug it in as an audio device. As you can see, it's in my uh, audio device drivers. I'm still gonna install the driver. And again, I think it's mainly uh, important to install to be able to access firmware updates. And if this product is like any of the new modern audio gear I've been testing out lately, there's almost always a new firmware update immediately. So I've run that, evo.app. It uh, says firmware update is required, so I'm going to go ahead and follow the firmware update. There's a little pause there, so keep that in mind. When you click on that, it may not uh, show you any information right away. Um, the firmware is version 1.0.0, so I would think that's the version on the unit, but maybe uh, there's a beta version on the unit. So we'll go ahead and choose that. Click Next. The unit is kind of flashing, showing some indication on the screen that it's alive and doing something. Seems to have gone through some kind of a reboot. 
Okay, now we're getting a progress indicator showing that it's installing it up firmware and okay. It says it's complete. And now as is pretty typical after a firmware update, we have to load the new firmware and that's done by rebooting. So we'll go ahead and do that. That's obviously a re unplugging and replug. There we go. Okay. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and do a test recording and make sure that it's working. So let's go ahead and launch Reaper. Start a new recording, but we need to make sure Reaper knows to use our new hardware. Let's go to device, Evo 4. We'll do playback Evo 4, apply, okay. Make a new track, got to record, enable it. Boom, we got level, folks. You don't want to have monitoring turned on in your DAW because you will hear the zero latency monitoring off the Evo and you'll hear the monitoring off the DAW at the same time, which creates a crazy double monitor signal, which is not fun. So we're going to uncheck monitor input. One, two, three. So now we are recording and getting an input without having to monitor it a second time. So we've got a great signal coming into the Evo 4 from this microphone. This is a condenser mic and um, Phantom Power is powering the mic and all is well. So everything is working great and we're getting plenty of headphone level. We have our headphone um, monitor mix set up, which at, at the price point of this unit, there are very few devices out there. Well, there's nothing at this price point, let's put it that way, that lets you do a monitor mix and balance the level between uh, your microphone and what comes back to you on, say, a directed session that you're doing over Source Connect, Skype, Zoom, IPDTL, or any of those systems for taking direction live on a session. So that is really, really nice to have. Headphone monitor is nice and strong, and I got a really clear signal. Um, more than likely, I'll probably set my mix so it biases more toward me and less toward the other studio playing back to me. Oh, that green button? You mean that big green button I haven't said a word about, touched, or done anything with? Okay, let's see what that green button does. This thing's got another trick up its sleeve, and that is the ability to automatically set your gain. So let's say you're ready to record. We're on channel one. To use smart gain, press the green button. It'll illuminate green and the input channel will light up to begin the, uh, and you have to choose which channel to use. I'm gonna do channel one. Channel one only. Now I'm going to press the button again to begin the process. It's going to start flashing red. Okay, so now it's learning the gain. So based on the performance I'm going to be doing today, how much gain does it need? And it's going to flash red and the volume wheel is going to start eliminating and indicating that it's now listening. Start playing or performing, and that's what I've just done. And smart gain will dial in the correct levels when the and when complete, it will flash green to indicate that it has been successful. So it has now set the gain for me. And you know what? Honestly, it set it much more conservatively than I expected, but that's actually a good thing. Um, if you're voice acting, doing character work, and you're going to get a little aggressive, you want the thing to give you plenty of headroom. You want there to be plenty of space uh, between clipping. So it looks like it set it so that the levels peak at about minus 12. I'm getting a level that looks like this. Normally I record with levels closer to minus six, but again, having a unit that will set you a more conservative peak level, so you don't have to worry about clipping if you occasionally really have to project or do a character voice where you really are getting on the mic, like I just did, you've got 12 dB of what looks to be the headroom that it's gonna provide before clipping. So I think the auto gain is smart. I think that 12 dB or so was what it seems to be giving is a very good margin of error in terms of level. So anyway, that's the smart gain feature and that works beautifully. But what I wanted to show you one more feature and I haven't seen anybody else demo this online yet, so I wanted to be sure I had this in my video, is I wanted you to see how it records multiple channels and what those other channels do. So right now I'm only, only recording channel one, that's my mic, but let's see what comes up on channels three and four. 
So I'm going to go into my record track. I'm going to choose which channel I'm recording from. So I'm going to go to my channel input assignments and look at that. The driver actually tells me channels three and four, which are actually labeled loopback one and two are something called loopback. So what would that be for? Well, if you're doing an interview on Skype, so let's go ahead and open up Skype or Zoom. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that the Evo, the Evo 4 is the input. I'm gonna turn off automatically adjust settings because I do not want it to mess with my gain settings. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And here's what's really wacky. It's something you gotta watch out for. Skype takes over the audio driver and screws with it, even messes with the gain. So as soon as I open Skype, guess what? The gain pegged because it turned it up to the maximum gain setting automatically. And make sure that drastic, that horrible automatically adjust microphone setting switch is off. Super important. So here, here's the magic. So let's go ahead and into our, into Reaper, record enable. And let's see when we test audio, if we get playback. Okay, so we're gonna go do a free test call. Actually, let's just finish logging in and then we'll do that. Again, first time ever running, uh, first time ever running Skype on here. And as soon as Skype logged in, guess what it did? It took over the gain settings again. So you can already tell it's gonna be quite a handful at first when you're trying to use something like Skype or Zoom, or anything that has automatic gain control. It has to be set, because it is really, really messing around. So this gain slider in Skype is actually controlling the gain on the unit. It really, really is controlling the gain on the unit. The two are tied together, so please be aware of that, and make sure you've set this once Skype is up and running, or you're gonna have trouble. Okay, so now we've got that set up. I'm going to go into audio MIDI setup and I'm going to go to Evo 4. And yes, yeah, so input, output. I think what's going to have to happen is for that playback to show up on the loopback channels, we're going to have to tell playback on the computer to show up on the loopback channels. So we'll do speaker setting loopback done. And let's see if that works. So now let's see what happens. Will I hear audio coming back through the device? Look at that. Yeah, there it is, there it is. So let's, let's actually record that so you guys can see the result, not just the meters. And let's pretend we're on a Skype call with somebody else and just do a test call. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, Please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. So there you have it. We've got an ISO track of my microphone and an ISO track from what's coming back from Skype, but not without a little bit of hoop jumping. So there you have it. We've got an ISO track of my microphone and an ISO track from what's coming back from Skype. But when All right, well, <laughs> what that test told me just now is Skype is slammed right now with users. But what I wanted to show was how Evo, your Skype or Zoom session, and you, how you would record both yourself and them isolated from each other all in one system without extra external gear, without extra devices. That ability to record yourself and the return with no external gear at $120 price point on separate tracks, I don't think anything else matches that. Um, the auto gain works correctly. The monitor balance is a really nice thing to have. I, I don't know. So far, color me really impressed. And also, I'm not using one of the cleanest mics in the world. It sounds real clean. I know what you guys are hearing right now is actually my overhead mic going into my production system. Um, but I'll have some audio samples that you guys can check out to hear how it comes right off the Evo 4. That's my rambling Evo 4 review. I hope you guys were able to stick it out to the end and found it useful. I like doing reviews that are more like tutorials because not only do I want to understand how the unit works myself and show you the process of how 
you learn to use it. But I love to show you guys the features that it comes with so that you can watch this video and hopefully learn a thing or two if you get yourself an Evo. Really impressed. Um, I give this thing two thumbs up. I'm really impressed with the sound quality, the usability, the feature set, all of it is quite amazing. The only thing it seems to miss, and maybe they'll be able to fix this in a firmware update, is if I want to play back something I've recorded and send it out to Skype. I'm not so sure this unit can do it in its current configuration. That would be amazing to be able to add that. Because if I'm a voice actor recording and the Skype call says, hey, can you play back the take? I would sure love that to be something the unit can do without having to reinvent the wheel or buy other equipment. It checks pretty much all the boxes. That's the only one I don't think it checks for voice actors, but it's really fantastic. Sound quality is amazing. Controls are, are, are really incredible. I really will not hesitate recommending this to voice actors. Um, many of them don't care about that playback capability. So again, this has been George the Tech. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. I hope everybody's staying healthy as we deal with this COVID-19 virus together as a world. What a time we're in. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching. This has been George the Tech.